Beheading of 17-year-old in honor killing shocks Iran. On February 5th, Mona Hedari, a 17-year-old girl, was beheaded by her husband. Mona was forced to marry her cousin at the age of 12. Her three-year-old son survives her. Previously, she had escaped her husband's harassment and abuse by fleeing to Turkey. Eventually, she was brought back to Iran to be with her husband with the help of her father. After beheading her, her, the husband paraded around the town square with her head in one hand and the knife in the other. Photos of him walking around with a decapitated head in his hand went viral on social media. After getting notified about the incident, police immediately began a search operation and arrested the man a few hours later. The incident has sparked outrage and a call for Iran to enact better laws to protect women. Abbas Ab uh, Abdi, a journalist in Iran, attacked conservative news outlets for ignoring the incident. In a 2020 report from The Lancet, there were 8,000 reported honor killings in Iran between uh, 2010 and 2014. The same report also stated that domestic violence incidents have increased during pandemic lockdowns. Yeah, um, this is the man. And you know this. This is the blurry part. Is basically him ho holding the head of his wife, and he was just he beheaded her, <clears throat> and he walked around the neighborhood so proud and smiling the entire time. Well, uh, as people were taking pictures of him while he was holding her head. So, <clears throat> the husband and wife, they're cousins. Uh, they were cousins, and. Uh, she was forced into this marriage at a very young age. What was the age? Um, at age... 12. 12. And she didn't uh, want to be married to him, and he knew that, and that's why he beat her a lot. And she fell for a man in Turkey, a Syrian man, I think, right? In Turkey. And she left to Turkey, and her, her father went to Turkey to get her uh, back. And her father brought her back and basically to Iran, where her husband managed to get her and beheaded her once she was back. She He felt like his honor was attacked so significantly because she had left her and because she was with another man. And he he had to, he felt like he had to set the things, he had to prove that he's not without honor. And that's why he felt that this was the way to, to go about doing this, right? Uh, the odd thing is that, by the way, this is the stats on honor killings in Iran are a lot higher than I ever assumed uh, when we once the story came out. The only reason why the story is getting a lot more attention than the other ones is the fact that the husband just walked around the neighborhood with the decapitated head, and that was like so. That's why the story is getting a lot more attention. But the stats are insane. Like this is happening a lot of times. And apparently a lot of them are not even being investigated by the police or like the, you know, so that's how common this is. This is, far, even though I grew up in Iran, this is a foreign concept to me because I, this is not the kind of environment I grew up in, right? So like these stats of how common this is in Iran is even shocking to me if somebody who lived in Iran and somebody who grew up in an environment where like, I mean, I, I mean, there are still misogyny, but not the, this level of honor, like is defending of honor and, that kind of bull, bull crap is like not wasn't that present at least in, in in the places I grew up in, right? Um, but yeah, this is like this is I I discuss how much of this is because of Islam on the secular jihadist, uh, you, you know, show. So here, like, if you guys, I I go over the if you go to the secular jihadist YouTube channel, and then go to the video section, you can see that the late this video is called is. Is honor calling is honor killing Islamic Iranian man behead 17 year old? So you could basically go. I discussed this for around two hours and go over everything in a lot of detail. So I'm not going to go over that in detail right now here. But the short answer is that yes and no. Like the honor killing itself is not something that is endorsed by Islam, uh, but the honor culture um, and the extreme measures that one is expect a man is supposed to defend his manhood by protecting his honor and controlling the woman in his family and promoting that idea um, and basically making men so like, making it seem like you're defending your honor is such an important part of a man's identity that it comes from Islam. Um, 
and I know there's honor culture and other religious, you know, traditions as well, but it, ru- it really doesn't get to the extent that Islam does it, right? And therefore, even though in Islam there's nothing specifically that tells you that this is okay, I mean, this is not okay, this is not okay in Islam, but Islam is, is still responsible for honor killing. Um, and because of that culture, the honor culture that it spreads. One, and another, uh, and the second reason, that's one, that's the first reason. And the second reason why Islam is still responsible is the fact that the ownership that it allows for husbands that they have over their wives and fathers that they have over their daughters uh, makes it so that the punishment for killing one's wife or killing one's daughter is so insignificant that if, if a man cares about his honor so much, they might, knowing the law, they might be willing to pay the price, right? So, for example, the laws for <clears throat> killing your son in Iran would be significantly higher for killing than compared to killing your daughter, right? Especially, especially if if you killed your daughter or your wife because of honor-related stuff, then the laws would be even though you would get charged, well, technically, well, apparently not. Even if you get charged and imprisoned. Um, because a lot of them haven't been preceded with the legals, uh, you know, with anything. You haven't been charged or anything like that. But the ones that do, the laws would be very lenient on you if it was a bad honor. So much so that we have it on the laws on, in Iran. And this is something I recently learned about. Okay. So I didn't even know this. That in very specific situations, you're actually allowed to kill your wife. I didn't know that this is on the law books in, in, in Iran. Right. If, you, and it's a very rare situation, but the fact that this still exists is unbelievable. In Iran, it's in the law that if you witness, if you actually see, not hear of, okay, not find find out, but if you see your wife having sex with another man, in that situation, there's no consequences for you killing your wife. The fact that that's that there's a certain kind of murder because that the, your honor has been attack to that extent like you could show you could see how much they value honor that it actually has made it to the law books the fact that there is within iranian law is is a loophole for actually like there's a there's one kind of wife killing that is legal it's unbelievable like it shows how much this whole like how significant this honor has been uh, this whole honor culture has been and also if you go watch the video i give you examples of some mullahs and religious figures who are who are saying who are considering the man to be the victim in the situation and they're at, like they, they're saying it right they're thinking like okay maybe he went too far with beheading her and stuff like that but um, they're acting like well can you blame her uh, blame him like can you like they're actually saying some some mullah, some religious very high like high level really like not not your random uh, corner islamic mosque mullah okay you're we're talking about very high officials and when it comes to islamic rules and uh, things in iran have come out and said that they're both both of these couples are the victim the husband is also vi- the victim because his honor was attacked to such a degree uh, which is unbelievable, okay? But yeah, I go over all of this in detail and I also go over uh, what kind of Islamic scripture is responsible for spreading honor culture like this. So if you want to see that, that's a two-hour discussion. Uh, again, you could go search for the Secular Jihadist um, YouTube channel and in the video section, you should be able to see that. Yes, I uh, posted a link in the live chat and I put the title right here. Mm-hmm. So you can search for this title. I would highly encourage people to go look into this because Armin digs into a lot of aspects of, um, uh, can you help me pronounce it correctly? Hey, you're right. So a lot of people refer to this as honor, but the actual word, the actual thing that is being, the actual, it's, 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 that is the, the Arabic word for what this is in Islam. Okay. And the best translation for it is honor. But it's not; it's, it doesn't capture the entirety of what it is. And again, if you want to know what qayrat is and what is, it's basically promoting qayrat, um, which is technically like honor culture. But if you want to know exactly what that is and why so people feel so strong about it, again, you could watch that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. yeah. Um, Bengali Hindu is saying, is death penalty allowed for this particular case? So this is an incident where there is something called the law of retribution, which is based off of like biblical or Abrahamic law, which basically means like an eye for an eye. 
um, which is literally sometimes meant people get blinded by the state because they blinded someone. Um, but when it comes to honor killings, what happens is that normally these aren't prosecuted and there isn't the death penalty because oftentimes honor killings are done by the family themselves. And it is only the family of the victim who can f go fight for the retribution. They can go fight for the death penalty. And oftentimes they're not going to do that against their own family member. That's my understanding based off of some things I've read. Um, so, 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 that's so it's a key so executions in iran are separate like for some reason they separate it from casas right they call it an execution when the government is executing you uh for something that you did you know for example for blaspheming or gay sex or something like that or drug related stuff right and if that the government executes you for that they call it an execution right but then there's other forms of killing people with law that they don't for some reason refer to it as an execution or edom they call it desas which is an islamic term and those types of i mean it's technically uh, yes yeah, it's, it's execution so i'm gonna call it execution right but those types of execution they refer to them as resources because it's it's a it's it's a, the government killing you not because the government wants to kill you but because the family of the person you have murdered wants to kill you and islamically they have the right to demand you be killed so the government saying like our role in that position is not to kill you our role is to facilitate the execution for the family of the person that you killed okay um and it becomes more complicated when you kill your own family member because now who has supposed to come and demand the killing of you like you know, so and it's, it becomes completely excusable especially when the family member is a girl okay so that's like well, not excusable, but like the sauce doesn't apply anymore for some reason, right? Um, like for example, there's no the sauce. Like, like for example, if you kill your son, I'm I know, I'm not sure, but maybe the mother could come as, ask for the sauce for 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 the for the father to be killed or something like that. I'm I'm not sure how that works, but I'm pretty sure that if the daughter is killed by the father, there is no such a thing. Like you, you technically basically destroyed your own property, so who's going to come and demand this to be righted. Like this was yours anyways, right? Maybe like you should go to jail for two years or something, but like, yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge signal to um, people who want to do honor killing that even if there is a punishment um, at the end of the day, isn't two years in prison worth cleaning your honor, like defending your honor, like you are trained that you would be okay to even give your life, you know, to sacrifice everything to defend your honor. So what's two years in prison, right? I mean, you come up with your head, like they, they act like, they, you know, I come out of prison with my head up, held up high instead of like, you know, walking around in shame. So like, that's the two, that's like, you know, if, if two years, that make, that shows that I was willing to like pay a higher, like that shows how big of a man I am that uh, I, I was willing to sacrifice two years. You know, in jail, that's fine. I come up with like I come up holding my head up high, showing how important my honor has been. Like so, but that's the that's the attitude. It's it's so weird. Like I don't know if people can understand how significant, you know, how big of an insult people consider it if their honor has been challenged. It's like your entire identity as a man sometimes seems to be different. I go over so many examples of brothers controlling their sisters for, for that and how that's valued and how even women celebrate that as a as a virtue in man for a, a virtue for a man to celebrate honor in such a way and how t toxic this entire thing is so i go over that in the two hours so you could check it out yeah yeah i really highly recommend that uh, episode of secular jihadists um I mean, there really isn't that much more to add about this i mean it's horrifying it's horrific this, I mean, it shocked everyone. My mom sent this to me. She was like, oh, what oh. the heck? Yeah, like this got a lot of coverage around the world. Um, and, uh, you know, I think about her son. Yeah. You know, like growing up knowing that this is what your father is capable of for the sake of his honor. Like that's terrifying. And to not have a mother because of that. It's horrible. Yeah. It's barbaric, so. yes. 
This is the 21st century, guys. We're still beheading people for honor. It's so unbelievable. And it's happening um, a lot more than even I uh, thought, right? So, so this, yeah. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.